Good morning. We are going to do our vision board today. I am starting out by just going into Canva and I'm going to create a little collage. So we're going to start there and print all that stuff off and then we'll go ahead and do it together in the, uh, in the house. Welcome. Let's make a vision board. I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to buy this when poster board was available, but this just seems a little more durable. So got this from the dollar store. Using my kitchen shears. Oh no, I already messed up. Okay, yeah, last year I did a call and it was really fun, but this year just didn't work out with timing and stuff. I'll actually, I'll do my best to get a template for you that I used last year. I'll put that down in the description box if you wanna download that in Canva and you can do a, uh, you know, a virtual vision board or if you wanna pause this and run to the Dollar Tree and grab some supplies and do it along with me, that'd be really fun too. But yeah, I've never really done like one of these videos on YouTube before and I thought it would just be, just be kind of fun to like have a little, time capsule and talk through what's going on for me. So I'm sure this will not be one of those, you know, super well-performing videos, but I just, it's kind of the vibe this year. It's kind of the vibe I'm going for. So I printed off a bunch of pictures of random things. We're gonna talk through kind of the, the key categories, the key goals that I am looking to achieve this year. And then I'll get creative and show you the end results. So first up, when it comes to work, my only goal this year for 2024 is to have fun. I've done a lot of things that I really wanted to do from like a financial perspective and, and all of that. And yeah, honestly, like hitting those milestones felt good for a minute and it still feels good. Obviously, like I live in reality, right? We got to take care of our, our families and, and I'm very grateful to have the ability to take care of myself, take care of my loved ones, you know, have material, some sense of material stability, especially during such hard times. So very grateful for those things. I don't want to like undermine that, but my goals this year do not have a dollar amount. They do not have an engagement rate. They do not have a follower account. So for career, the first thing I've got is Ms. Oprah Winfrey here. Uh, lover or hater, I wouldn't be here without Oprah. I, I got to give my flowers while I can. I would go home every single day after school, particularly like in high school, and I would watch Oprah. And she just, she made it all possible, you know? She she introduced me to a concept of this like personal brand. You know, she was kind of like the original influencer. I know everyone always says Kim Kardashian's the original influencer. I think Oprah really was with her book club and favorite things list. What I love about her now still is that she is like, she's a masterclass in interviewing. And I love how she has been able to shine light on other people throughout her career and not have to be, you know, she's never had a reality show. She's never had a vlog. She gives us little glimpses into her life when she wants to. And I love that. So this year I want to channel a little bit more of my Oprah energy, <laughs> if you will. And I want to do more interviewing. I want to do more hosting this year. I don't know if you're supposed to put pictures of yourself on your vision board, but I've got a few. Um, this year I hosted a panel. This was one of my most proud projects this year. It was a panel that I did for name.com and I hosted, I wasn't in the hot seat. Like I was the host asking questions to a bunch of really talented influencers and it was really fun. I feel like I can really lean into my best self when I'm able to like shine the light on other people. So I don't know if that means I want to do more in-person hosting panels, things like that and or if that's just more podcast interviews or I don't know what that is, but that's definitely something that I wanna lean into. This is another picture that I found just on Pinterest. It's just some guy sitting on a stage um, doing a talk. Like I wanna keep doing speaking. I'm really loving doing that, but I also 
I want to do more stuff like this, like more kind of fireside chat vibes, you know, an intimate, like almost like a poetry reading. I don't write poetry, but kind of that sort of vibe is what I want to do. Maybe I need to create that myself. We'll see. A couple of other career people that I have on here. Who do I have on here? Ooh, this is a good one. I Justine. I think she is a great example of somebody who has fun with work and just the longevity of her and somebody else on this that I'm about to cut out in a second, their longevity is really, really inspiring to me. I don't know, I just love I Justine. She's fantastic. I think she is so innovative, so creative, and she's really, you know, adapted with the times. She tries different things, but at the end of the day, like whenever I watch her content, whether it's on YouTube or, you know, just looking at her tweets or whatever, I feel like she's having fun. I really don't know that much about her, but I do know she's an OG on YouTube. And I think the way that she has translated that success, you know, over the years is really inspiring. So I'm gonna put her on my vision board. And I'm also gonna put a similar, a similar character here, our boy, Marcus Brownlee. Like his longevity is crazy. If you go to his YouTube channel and go oldest to newest, I mean, he was like, he was like a child. Um, I don't know how old he was when he started YouTube, but it's like, aw, it's like a little child. And I'm pretty sure, I think he just covered, I wanna say he was on the cover of Fast Company. Uh, yeah, I don't know, something like that. Not that it's all about that stuff. Again, I feel like he really has fun with work. Like, I feel like this is what he loves. He gets so geeked about the new tech and the things that he's, you know, reporting on. and. I love that. So we're gonna put his face on there too. I don't know who these people are. So please ignore, like I'm not, I have no idea who these people are. I'm not endorsing them or anything they stand for. I know nothing about them. But I just really liked this, this uh, magazine cover that I found on Pinterest. And it says art partners. I've just been feeling this really strong call for partnerships and not to get like way too woo woo on you all. My friend was doing tarot readings for charity and so I did one. It was my first tarot reading ever and she was like, I'm feeling a very strong, like a strong call, a strong desire for partnership in your life right now. I don't know what that looks like, but I liked this cover because it says art partners as well. Like, yeah, I know I could probably hire somebody else on my team or I could, you know, there's a lot of different ways that I could bring people in the room, if you will. I want like equal partnership slash co-mentorship slash co-creation on something that we love, you know? I don't want it to be like, oh, just make a bunch of money together. I like that it says art partnership. It seems to be something kind of creative and kind of fun. So yeah, I'm looking for more of that. One more worky thing on here, which was this conference room. Similar to the partnership, you know, magazine cover. I don't know, I'm gonna be honest with you. I have had my eye open, like I'm not looking, but for the first time in a really long time, I've been like, I don't know, maybe I could get a job. <laughs> like, I know, I know that sounds wild. Now, let's be honest here. I don't think I would ever, I don't know, never say never, but I don't envision myself ever going back to like a corporate salary nine to five type job, but like, could I be, taken on as like a corporate advisor of some sort. I've seen like CEO roles posted or um, corporate consultant type jobs, things of that nature. I'm just feeling kind of like the corporate vibe to some degree. Like I, I still wanna be here working in my sweatpants like nine days out of 10, but I am open. There was a job that was kind of in this like mission-based um, it's a startup that is for a cause basically. And they were hiring a free, you know, unpaid chief marketing officer. And I was like, hmm, maybe I should go for that. You know, it'd be on my terms since it's unpaid, but an executive kind of leadership role. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's in my future. Who knows? Okay. That's work. So again, I just want to have fun with work. I wanna try new things. I want to be challenged. I want to maybe have a partner of some sort in something, I don't know. I don't really know. The next thing that I guess is sort of related to work is this thing that I know everybody's tired of me talking about and just not doing, and that is a book. I really, truly want to release a book, like genuinely. 
I have a book written and I'm just, there's two things that have been preventing me from releasing it. The first one is just self doubt and yeah, like self doubt, I guess, I don't know. The other thing is time, which is a poor excuse. The self doubt one we can get into, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that and some of it's valid, some of it's not, you know, it, it's a challenging thing to like put yourself out there. We can acknowledge that. The time thing is BS. It's BS. We make time for what we prioritize or we prioritize. What? How does the saying go? We, I don't remember. We, we make time. <laughs> we can choose what we make time for, especially when we're crushing our financial goals. Like that is true wealth to me, right? Is having time, having time to be able to work on things. Uh, you know, having the money to be able to outsource things in our business so that we can do the things that only we can do, like write a book. And I know you can do a ghostwriter and stuff like that, but I don't, that's not my vibe at all. I like writing, I love writing. I've been writing forever. So why can't I prioritize this? It's an interesting thing. My foot is falling asleep, so maybe I need to pause for a second. These are my book pictures. I think in the social media world, I've kind of gotten really used to like walking on eggshells. Uh, you know, to not get like in trouble. Somebody, you know, I put, put Oprah on here and I already know, I already see the comments being like, somebody's not gonna like that. Some people don't like Oprah, haters. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, kind of, but you know, some people don't like her. So for some reason that's gonna reflect negatively on me because I put her face on my vision board. You know, she's a billionaire and billionaires are all evil. And, you know, all this stuff. And so I think I've just gotten so used to that being my default of like, oh, I don't wanna offend anyone. I don't wanna speak too much about things that I believe. And yeah, you know, a book is literally uh, my brain on, on a couple hundred pages. And I know someone's not gonna like it. Somebody's gonna say it's too hustle culture. Somebody's gonna say it's too woo woo, you know? And like, there's never gonna be a perfect balance. And I need to just be okay with that. These pictures I really liked because I really wanna like have fun with the process of like, if I get pre-orders or pre-orders, I really can't say that word, pre-orders, or if, um, you know, if people order signed copies, signed editions and things like that, I wanna like have fun with the packaging. I've just been feeling like packaging in general. I talked about it in another video about Freelance Friday Club guest instructor packages. Like I wanna just create little experiences. I think people are getting a little burned out from everything being online. So I liked these, this one has like a little tea. I'm not a tea drinker, so I probably wouldn't do that. But this one, it looks like it has like a book and maybe like a little zine or I don't know, just like something cute. Like I wanna really have fun and make some premium kind of things. Also maybe an event. I think I had a picture of like a book launch event, which everything that I've been reading from my author friends says that book event, book launch events are just like not like they used to be. You know, people don't really do book parties, book release parties anymore, which just makes me so sad. But I don't know, I want to. <laughs> Seems like it would be fun. Okay, Um. next up, I wanna take at minimum three full weekends off a year. I mean, not a year, a month. I wanna take at minimum three full weekends off a month. That means I can still work one weekend if I feel inclined to, if I'm launching, if I have to travel, not have to, if I want to travel that weekend, things of that nature. But yeah, that's super important to me because this year I just felt, honestly, I told you I hit, you know, I had my highest revenue and highest profit year ever in my whole business. There's a lot of, teachers and, and creators out there who kind of teach that it's just all about that almighty dollar. But I'm going to tell you what, like making that almighty dollar and not having time to spend it or not having, it's not even time having energy to spend it or whatever. It doesn't feel good. It really doesn't feel good. So I need to really prioritize being a little selfish. But something about me, if you enjoy my content, you can probably relate to like, it's very hard to take time off sometimes because it's like, well, I, I like being productive. I really do. I really enjoy being productive. And I like having kind of like an end goal and I like making an impact on things. And I like, you know, I, I just, I don't, I'm not really like lay on the couch all day and watch reality TV. I mean, I like reality TV and stuff, but it's like, my escape for like 30 minutes a week or something, you know, like I don't like what would I do with a whole weekend off. And so I definitely want to 
plan some things that allow me to feel like I'm doing something. I don't know if that makes sense. A couple things. One place that has been, I don't know why, I've just been really called to Portland recently. Actually, not recently. I, I wanted to go to Portland this year. I had it on my list because for some reason, whenever I meet somebody online who I connect with, like usually my students and they're, they're somebody who I just, I'm like, ooh, like we really vibe, you know? I'm like, oh, where are you from? And they're like, Portland <laughs> or like somewhere in the Pacific Northwest. I'm like, what is that? I don't want to like move there or anything. I'm probably not moving anywhere, but I've just, it's just been calling my name. Like, I just feel like I need to experience it. And then another place like that has been Atlanta. I was supposed to also go to Atlanta. I was going to go to a conference in Atlanta this year and I didn't end up going. Same thing. I actually don't have friends there. I don't think, I don't think I really know anyone there. I just like, it's one of those places that I've like, I've never been. It's like a two hour flight. Like, why don't I just go? I don't know. Why don't I just do a long weekend? It's those types of things where you sit down at the end of the year and you're like, I don't know. Why didn't I do that? <laughs> We're going to save this one for later. This is just a cool pick, but I'm kind of running out of space on my board. Just a cool California beachy pick. I've been spending a lot more time in California over the past couple of years and my love hate relationship with California continues. Wow. Okay. I actually have a lot of personal stuff on here. So I'm going to have to start to be a little more picky with what I put on this. We've got camping, a camping pick. I definitely want to do more camping this year. Um, hiking. I thought this was a nice, I think this is a free people ad, but liked that. And then this one, I might have to blur it because not that it's like not even that risque, but YouTube can be a little, a little, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Whatever. This is our girl, Pam Anderson. First of all, you guys should watch her documentary if you haven't watched it. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. When I was watching it, I was kind of remembering, I was like, I never... I was, I'm like a little young for Baywatch. Like I didn't really know her from that show. I knew her from the I'd rather go naked than wear fur campaigns. When I was a young, young, soon to be vegetarian, I was like doing all this research and I would order all these stickers and things from animal rights groups. And that's how I knew her. I was like, oh, who's that like pretty lady who's like always posing for, you know, these animal rights groups. I would absolutely love to work with an animal rights group in a similar way. Obviously I'm not famous though. And I don't think they do that exact campaign anymore after like the Me Too era. They're probably like, we don't need to really like objectify people to get our point across. Um, so maybe not that exact campaign, but I love the idea of like using whatever gifts you have, whether that's beauty, whether that's fame, whether that's money and using it for a cause that you believe in. And I know some of you are clicking off right now. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna preach about being vegan. Don't worry. Most of the people in my life are not vegan. It's just, it is something that's very important to me. I mean, I, I made the choice for myself to go vegetarian when I was like 12. I wanna always be an open, you know, friendly resource if you ever wanna talk about things or if you're ever curious. But yeah, I want to use my gifts, whatever the heck they might be, to help some of those causes that I believe in, in my, in my free time. Okay, what else? Oh, and here's just a picture of a spa, because like, I really do love the spa, and I don't go ever, even though, again, it's like, I could be doing those things if I wanted to, but I just don't prioritize it. Or I don't feel like, like I am very conservative with money. I'm like, oh my gosh, I could not spend, you know, 200, 300, $400 on like a spa treatment, but like I'll spend that on my business in no question. Oh my God, my foot's falling asleep. <gasps> Ow, it hurts, it hurts so bad. <sighs> oh, I forgot this one for the writing. Pretty sure this shirt is just from Amazon. Maybe I need to just buy it. <laughs> But I really, it's like silly. I would never wear this shirt. Well, maybe I would, I don't know. But it says, sorry, can't, writing, bye. And I just love the energy of it is, remember I said the time thing is like BS, you know? The time is just like an excuse. Because again, if you're making your financial goals, if you don't need to make X amount of dollars this month, this year, whatever, why can't you just say, hey, the rest of the year is dedicated to writing because that's what's important to me. And I need to have this energy. I need to be able to set boundaries and say, no, this month or this week or whatever it is, that's writing week or writing month or writing whatever. So 
look at that shirt and do what it says. Okay, the next category is kind of like health routines. I, I really just wanna develop healthier relationships with fitness, with food, and with routines. And so this is a picture of an iPhone alarm, which I actually don't wanna use an iPhone alarm. I have a sun, sunrise alarm clock now, which I love, but waking up at 6 a.m. I wanna be a little bit better about mornings. When I get like depressed or stressed, I just like sleep. <laughs> That's always been my sort of coping mechanism. Like I'll sleep in really late and then I'll, you go through this cycle of just feeling terrible because you're like, well, especially in the winter, cool, I got like, you know, five hours of sunlight or whatever the heck and I feel behind, I feel perpetually behind. Just a mess, okay? So I need to get better about those routines. Last year, I feel like I was really good at morning routine. Like I would make breakfast, I would have a cup of coffee, I would go on a walk, I would do all these things. And this year, I just like, everything got out of whack where I was, I mean, I don't remember the last time I ate breakfast, <laughs> like to be honest with you, like other than, well, I went out for breakfast the other day on the weekend and uh, or I'll eat like, oatmeal, which is like fine, you know, but like, I, I don't remember really the last time that I, you know, made breakfast or even just like went out for coffee. This is another picture. I really loved this. This is one of my favorite pictures of me this year, just like shooting some video. So this will go in the first category of doing work that's fun. I just chose a bunch of outfit pictures. I didn't wanna do like working out pictures because I feel like that can sometimes have like a negative effect i can be like really obsessive you know i can just like go overboard with it i don't want to do that i want to embrace you know myself like how i naturally am and not want to change it only want to be eating and working out for health and not for like you know aesthetic reasons and so i just chose some outfits that i think are really cute because i think part of that is personal style and knowing how to dress for the body that you're in. I love these outfits because I feel they're feminine, but edgy, professional, yet fun. So that's what I want. That's like the type of style I really wanna have. This is one of my favorite outfits of the year. I don't have the jacket on in this picture, but I was just like really feeling myself in this outfit. I wore it to speak in Boston. And yeah, I love monochrome and black and denim, okay? That's what I like. Okay, I guess I just have some house goals. This is another thing that's nice for the weekends. When I say I wanna take three weekends off, minimum a month. Having like house projects is really helpful too. And I, I think last year was a little better for me when it comes to work-life balance because I had just moved into my house and I felt this like need to get everything all situated. And then once things were like livable, I was like, all right, go back to make up all the money you just spent on this house. And I just sort of stopped. So there's a lot of unfinished projects or a lot of projects that I wanted to do, but just never started. I have two bathrooms that I wanna renovate, actually. The powder room, like the guest bathroom. I wanna do just like something simple. I don't know, this is a little much black for me. I wanna get away from doing so much black because I also feel like it's like a little depressing. Uh, but just a neutral. I think I wanna do just neutral, you know, in the guest bathroom. And then in the main, like my main bathroom, I wanna do like a fun tile situation. This is a little out of my comfort zone, so maybe not quite so blue, but just something a little brighter, like spa vibes, you know? I have like a little library area upstairs that I started doing cute stuff with and just stopped. <laughs> so I also want to work on that. I thought this was cute. It's kind of, it kind of looks like that. It's like, I've got white shelves up there. I color coded all of my books up there. And now I'm going to, I got a bunch of fun. I got some glitter glue. Like, I don't know. What am I gonna do with that? We don't know. Got some little words, words, letters. Um, I got some fun, these I got from the dollar store. So I'm just gonna, oh, oh, I remember the other thing I was gonna say to you is I got this sheet music to like one of my favorite songs of the year. Um, I probably played this song more than any other. It's The Greatest by Lana Del Rey. I kind of want my life to just feel how that song feels, if that makes sense. If you know the song, I don't know, it just makes me really happy. So I think I'm gonna actually put on some music and make this a little pretty and I'll 
maybe show you the final results if it if it looks good, I guess. <laughs> Okay, quite a while later, I am back with some show and tell. I've gotten glitter glue on my arm. Maybe it wiped off by now. Anyway, so I gotta hold this thing gently, but I don't know, it's kind of looking like, you know, a middle schooler put it together. Like the glitter glue was maybe <laughs> a kind of weird idea. Same thing for the letters. Like I started to get like a little judgmental of myself. I was like, it's getting a little like live, laugh, love. You know what I mean? Also bothered me that I use different tenses uh, for different words. I've got awaken, I've got movement, I've got have fun, I've got play, but you know, try not to be so hard on myself. It's just supposed to be for you. And I do feel like everything makes sense. I don't know, uh, but yeah, so that's what I've got here. I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna let it dry and uh, hopefully not get glitter glue all over my carpet. I'm gonna let it dry and probably add some more little accents here and there. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it though. I guess I should put it up in my office or something, right? That's what people do. Also, I ran out of space for the 24. I also didn't have big numbers because I want to put like 20, 24 big in the middle. So I improvised. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you all for a wonderful 2023. I will have some videos still for the rest of the year, but um, not many, <laughs> not many, to be honest, just a few podcasts and a couple vlogs and things like that. But I thank you for everything this year. You can check out the vision board template down below if you want to do this for yourself. I think it is a really helpful exercise just to kind of really think, I don't know, I'm going to talk about this on the first podcast of the year, um, in more detail, but yeah, there is like lots of numbers and data I can give you about how to have a good 2024. I can tell you to look at your numbers from last year, look at what the trends predict are gonna be popular next year, all of those things. But at the end of the day, if you do not feel good about what you're doing, like that's what really matters, you know? So I do think that this kind of woo woo, silly little stuff is important. It's an important practice to get into just to see, you know, are the things that I'm doing actually making me happy? Are they filling my soul because yeah, I can teach you how to make a lot of money, but if you are not having fun making that money, if you are not enjoying the process, you might as well just go get a job. You can probably make more money at, you know, some weird corporate job somewhere. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Leave me a comment. Let me know something on your vision board if you care to, and I will talk to you on, actually I'll have a video on Wednesday for you. So stay tuned for that and uh, have a good day. Bye.